So this is a bit expensive. <laughs> this one has a quad core CPU, has four gigs RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and even a gigabit ethernet port, fully certified to get that in a box around about $30, I really do think this could be a true fire stick killer. I ordered mine on a Tuesday and it arrived the same week on a Sunday. So super fast delivery and that price I mentioned before includes the shipping. Let's open this up. In fact, okay, so this is the G7 Max Android TV. I believe you will have some kind of clock face at the front here. On the side here, you have nothing. On the back here, we can see we have that gigabit ethernet port. We have optical out, we have AV out, HDMI out, and we have the DC uh, power. On this side, we can see we have a USB 3 port. We even have a micro SD card slot, and we have a USB type 2 port. Underneath that, we can see we've got some ventilation, and it says smart TV box. So it does feel very light and plasticky in the hand, but I mean, at $30, we can't expect too much. And just for a size comparison, here we can see the very popular on 4K streaming box. Very popular, but we can see port wise, we have one HDMI port and we have this single micro USB port. So definitely in terms of connectivity, in terms of expansion, in terms of ports, this one is really light years ahead. We get a small HDMI lead. We can see mine came with the UK power adapter. And when you do place the order, you can specify if you want a UK USA or EU power plug. So I can plug that straight in. And lastly, we have the remote control. So I'm sure you're very familiar with this kind of remote. If we just compare that to the on box, we can see they are more or less identical, except here we can see we have a button taking us directly to Google Play. But I mean, these remotes normally do work very well. So this one should be okay. And lastly, we have a small user manual. So pretty standard, plug the power cable in, add the HDMI lead. And obviously you can expand the storage with a memory card or with the USB drive. So on the back here, we can see the specs. So this is running the quad core 905 X4 CPU. You've got the Mali G31 GPU. It's got four gigs RAM and my one has 64 gig storage. Now the 64 gig one is the one that has the gigabit ethernet. This is also available in 32 gig storage, which is a bit cheaper, but that only then gives you 100 meg LAN. So it is optional, but I think at this price point, if you can get 64 gig storage and the gigabit ethernet for around about $30, I'll definitely go for the uh, extra storage. So that's everything you get inside the box. Let me now power this up and let me take you through the Android TV setup process. Okay, so I powered up the box, went through the normal Android TV setup process, took a few moments. I was then able to restore some of my applications I've installed on other Android TV devices. And we're now on the all too familiar Android TV home screen. Let me just also quickly say that I noticed that the remote control does actually have a small mouse button at the top here. So if I press that, we can see this does actually have a built-in virtual mouse. I know some of you do like to use certain applications that do require a mouse. Well, with this version of Android TV, with this particular remote control, that virtual mouse is built into the operating system and it works absolutely fine. Can I just take you through the settings for a second? Let's go to device preferences. Let's go to about, and we can see this is the G7 Max. We can see it's running Android TV 11 and out of the box, once I've installed about, I think four or five applications, we can see we have 57 gigs available. So really ample storage, all the storage that you could possibly need for your movies, streaming applications, utilities, even games, 57 gigs is a lot of space to play with. But of course, because the device has those built-in USB ports, you can very easily plug in a device, plug in a USB drive, and then expand the storage. Let's go back. So that's the base storage. But you can see I did plug in a, a USB drive just to make sure that's working fine and it was working fine. Let's start with the super quick uh, speed test because as you know, this device does have gigabit uh, dedicated ethernet port, which I have plugged my cable into. Let's see what kind of speeds we can get on this $30 Android TV box. We are easily pushing over 800 meg downstream, which is a, a fantastic speed. Let's do that one more time to make sure it wasn't a, a fluke or anomaly. Okay, in test number two, we can see again, the G7 Max easily pushes over 800 meg, very close to 900 meg downstream. So super happy with those speeds. You won't have any issues streaming even 8K content, but also like downloading content, browsing, 
you will get phenomenal performance using that onboard gigabit port. Let's go back. Now in terms of Wi-Fi, we know this box doesn't support Wi-Fi 6, only supports Wi-Fi 5. So if I go back into the settings, in fact, I can just disconnect the ethernet cable. Let me unplug that now. Okay, that's unplugged. Let's now connect to five gigahertz Wi-Fi and let's see what kind of speeds we can get on Wi-Fi 5. I know with the last box I tested, which was the Hematics box, I mean, that was actually with Wi-Fi 6. That was pushing around about four or 500 meg. Okay, where we can see this box, that's actually a very low speed. So test number one, we're getting around about 200 meg. Let's do that one more time. I mean, to be fair, if you got access to ethernet and you can get uh, speeds of 900 meg, then I probably wouldn't bother about Wi-Fi on this particular device, especially if it's only getting around about two or 300 meg, which even saying that 200 meg is more than enough, even for 8K streaming, but you can see what kind of speeds we got with the ethernet. Uh, on this particular box, I would rather use a hardwired connection. Okay, that's the Wi-Fi test. Now, as with all of these initial impression type videos, I'm just going to go and answer some of those common questions that you may have if you're going to purchase this box. Like, can you side load? Does it support Dolby Vision? It doesn't. Uh, for example, um, does it support Netflix in HD or in 4K? We're going to test that. Can you install a custom launcher and questions like that? So firstly, I do want to check and see do you actually get a fully certified box with full 4K Netflix? Well, we can see I can open up Netflix. Now I've actually got a, a test account on Netflix, which gives me access to the 4K tier. But as you can see here, I'm only seeing HD. So HD for the office, HD for, I mean, that's for uh, spatial audio, but we can see these movies typically would be available in 4K, but it looks like on this box, it is limited to HD, so 1080p. So it is still certified, but only certified for 1080p playback. So if that's going to be a deal breaker, then I do think that's worth mentioning. But for most people, typically, if you're going to be streaming via third party sources anyway, then you'll be able to play whichever resolutions that you can find your content in. OK, so Netflix, we can see we get HD. Let's go back. Let's now try YouTube. OK, we're now streaming some 4K content. Let's just forward that a bit. Okay, you can see that catches up straight away. And you notice at the top where it tells you how many frames have actually played this content in 4K. We've currently processed over 1900 frames and the device has not dropped a single frame. So that just shows you again that when you have that ethernet connection, you do have that solid, dependable, reliable connection. And even with all of this, it still hasn't dropped a single frame. That really is a a nice picture there. The obvious question, how do we sideload on a new box like this? Well, download, download it directly from the App Store, open that up for the first time, click on OK. Let's now browse to any website where you may want to download an APK from. I can now click on the hamburger menu, click on downloads. Let's say, for example, I want to sideload one of these applications, like maybe um, remote ADB shell. I can click on that. I can scroll down and let's now click on download. Let's see what the device responds with when we try to sideload something. So you want to install this application, click on install. And would you believe it guys, I didn't actually enable anything. So it does seem to be on this device, sideloading is enabled out of the box. I can click on done. I and mean, typically you have to go into the settings where it says unknown sources, click on that. And here you'd have to allow the applications that you want to enable sideloading, but we can see download has automatically been allowed. So I didn't make any changes out of the box. All I did was just install downloader and straight away we can download without any problem. So in summary, sideloading your favorite streaming applications, your favorite utilities, games, anything like that will work absolutely fine on this G7 box. Let's go back. Okay, next up, can you use a custom launcher on this G7 Android TV box? Well, on Android TV devices, it's a super easy process. What we can see on this device, I can just press one button on the remote control, three, two, one, and we are instantly taken to a custom launcher, no adverts, no interruptions. I can fully customize this. I can change the wallpaper. I can create custom sections and really just get complete control of my device with the custom launcher without any issues whatsoever. So that's working fine. Let's go back. Let's have a quick look at the specs. Okay, so we can see, I mean, there it says manufacturer Google, but I don't really believe that's accurate. But we can see, yep, this is running four gigs RAM. 
supports Bluetooth. We can see it's a four core quad core CPU, but we can see that the device is running in 32 bit mode, which I know some of you are interested in. Now this really gets a bit interesting. Firstly, I notice in thermal, that's running pretty high, I think guys. The fact that it's running on 80 degrees. I mean, if I touch the box, yeah, it does feel quite warm, but that does seem to be quite high. And one of the issues with these cheaper boxes is they don't normally have good ventilation. So it may be worthwhile just plugging in a, a small USB fan underneath there, but that definitely looks a bit high to me. Now if we go to codex, here we can see the codex supported. It does support AV1, does support VP9. It says Adobe Vision, but when I tested Adobe Vision uh, video clip, it didn't actually work properly. So again, that does look a bit suspicious why it's saying Adobe Vision there, unless I'm not reading that properly. Okay, let's back out of that. Okay, so your favorite third-party streaming applications work absolutely fine. Browse all the content in here. I can choose something. See plenty of links. Uh, RD, of course. I could choose one of these. And in less than five seconds, we are now streaming this. That's working absolutely fine. Pull that a bit. That's working great. Okay, let's back out of that. Okay, so what are my closing thoughts on this G7 Android TV box? Well, firstly, I'm very impressed that for around about $30, you can get a fully certified box that gives you high definition Netflix, gives you 4K YouTube playback, gives you gigabit Ethernet with 4 gigs RAM and 64 gig storage. So definitely very impressed with the specs at that particular price point. But, but as you've seen with the video today, there are some concerns regarding the temperature it does seem to heat up a lot around about 80 degrees. And that's really just browsing around the home screen. It wasn't like I was doing any intensive activities or intensive gaming, just maybe playing some YouTube videos and navigating around. And the temperatures were really ramping up to around about 80 degrees. The other thing I didn't like was the fact that for some reason it was identifying that it does have Dolby Vision. So there was that time before, I think it was me call where those devices were actually using cloned certificates. So they were saying they were an official certified device, but it's only because they had ripped off those certificates from an, an official device. I think eventually Netflix caught on and they just banned that device. I think now Mikul is fully certified properly, but I'm wondering if this device may be you know, it's not properly certified. They're using some kind of hack or something to, as some of those anomalies are a bit weird. Also with regards to updates, as you know, with these devices, updates can be a bit tricky where in most cases, once you get the device, then you're pretty much stuck with it. I mean, unlike something like Homatics, which is a, a more trusted, more reliable brand, something like this, you're not really going to expect getting updates or support with it. So I think you really do have to factor in all of these things that, you know, is it worthwhile paying 30 or $35 for a box like this? with those potential issues. So I would say it's definitely worthwhile checking out, especially if you don't care about official certifications. You just want a box that you can play your favorite third party streaming applications, comes with ample storage, comes with that gigabit port. And that way I do think the device is good, but I think somebody looking for a certified device, something that's gonna give them guaranteed updates, I would say in this case, probably look elsewhere. So that's pretty much this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. I will leave the links in the video description and pinned comment if you wanna check this box out. Do leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.